Hey everyone, welcome back to PT Pioneer and in today's video we're going to be covering the personal trainer job description. By the end of this video you should have a clear idea of what the day-to-day -day looks like for a personal trainer as well as the duties that you have towards your clients. If you are still deciding on a certification, head over to ptpioneer.com and take the quiz on the main homepage. This will help you determine which certification is best suited for you, so go ahead and check that out. If you want some additional study materials, head over to Trainer Academy. They have a lot of great resources and you can cut your study time in half, so go ahead and check that out in the description below. And as always guys, don't forget to smash the like button, it definitely helps out the channel, and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you guys want to see more videos like this coming out in the future. So without further ado, let's get into it and go over the personal trainer job description. So to cover the general overview, a personal trainer is someone that is certified by a certifying agency to train individuals to lead healthier lives. They are the final responsible for creating workout routines, taking measurements, and also providing motivation for their clients. As you're starting out, you need to be certified by a certifying agency such as ACE or the National Academy of Sports Medicine. However, it's not limited to just these two. There are many other certifying agencies out there. One of the most basic requirements to becoming a certified personal trainer is that you need to be at least 18 years old and you need to have a CPR AED certification. Again, you also need to be working as a personal trainer either at a corporate gym or at a local fitness studio. Additionally, you can also be self-employed and be running your own personal training business. During this time, you also need to have the required personal training insurance. This is something that you need to require on your own if you are a self-employed personal trainer. However, if you work for one of these larger corporate gyms, they should be able to provide that for you. Additionally, you also need to show your competence in sports medicine and exercise science. Once you have everything that we mentioned set up, you are ready to start training your first client as a personal trainer. Most individuals start off working at a corporate gym such as 24 Hour Fitness as it's an easy way to get experience. More often than not, a client that you'll be receiving in this situation will be given to you by one of the salesmen. The first thing that you would need to do in this scenario is to assess their overall health and fitness. Here you'll be conducting assessments and taking the basic measurements such as body fat percentage, circumferences, and weight. Typically, there are three assessments that you need to conduct in order to assess their level of fitness. And the second is assessing their overall strength. Lastly, you'll also be addressing their posture and assessing what sort of muscular imbalances that they have. Fitness assessments are a big part of the job description. So if you want to be a great personal trainer, you should be able to understand how to conduct these assessments and give quality advice to your clients. Every other duty is built around understanding what your client's goals and needs are and building your client's program around that. So starting off with cardiovascular health, there are dozens of different assessments that you can conduct in order to assess your client's cardiovascular health. Each certifying agency has their own methods to conduct an assessment on cardiovascular health. However, we have two main recommendations. The two recommendations that we would have for the cardiovascular health assessment are the three minute step up test as well as the mile walk test. The first test requires your client to step up on a 12 inch stool up and down for about three minutes. After this is done, you will monitor their heart rate and see how long it takes for them to get back down to their resting heart rate. Depending on the length of time it would take for them to get back down to their resting heart rate will determine their overall cardiovascular health. The other test requires your client to walk an entire mile as fast as they can without getting up to a jogging pace. From there, the overall cardiovascular health is determined by sex, age, as well as the overall time it takes for them to complete the mile. These are the two recommendations in terms of the cardiovascular health assessment. We would mainly recommend the first one as this one takes less time. Additionally, we also consider this to be a better indicator of overall cardiovascular health. Next up, we need to assess the client's overall strength. The second assessment that you need to conduct after the cardiovascular assessment is the strength assessment test. Generally, personal trainers would normally conduct around three different strength assessments before the actual training commences. Generally, you should also consider performing two upper body strength assessments as well as a lower body strength assessment. The two upper body strength assessments should be measuring their upper body push and pull strength. And to assess lower body strength, you would use an upright leg press to assess the overall leg strength. Again, this is only for an initial assessment, so you don't want to push too much weight and risk injuring your client. 
With that in mind, you need to ensure that your client is able to perform at least 15 repetitions for the first set. Every set onward, make sure that you're adding around 10 pounds of weight until the client cannot perform 15 repetitions. From these assessments, you should be able to assess your client's overall lower body strength. As for assessing your client's overall upper body push strength, we would normally use an upright chest press machine. Same thing with the leg press, you would want your client to first perform 15 repetitions. For this assessment, you want to increase the weight 5 pounds after each set and continuously add 5 more pounds after each set until the client cannot perform 15 repetitions. Between each of these sets, make sure you're giving your client around 2-3 to three minutes in order to fully recover and perform the next set. We mainly use this timing as well as the machine in order to prevent further injury to the client. For the upright pull assessment, we would use an upright pull machine. Things such as an upright rowing machine are useful to conduct this assessment as your client can rest their chest on a pad. Similar to the upright chest press machine, you want to add 5 pounds of weight after each set until the client can no longer perform 15 repetitions. After you've conducted these three initial assessments, you should be able to gauge what the client's overall strength level is. From there, you should be able to understand what sort of programming should be required in order to address the client's health and fitness needs. Again, your role as a personal trainer is to assess the overall fitness levels of client before you start prescribing any fitness programs or routines. The last set of assessments will focus more towards the client's posture. Typically, we would normally apply multiple postural assessments in order to see if there are any muscular imbalances within the client. If some muscles are too strong or overactive and some muscles are too weak, this poses a risk for future injury. Probably the most important assessment that you need to conduct for this is the overhead squat assessment. The client's toes should be pointed slightly outward and they should be instructed to squat as low as they can, mainly keeping their weight on their heels. You should be assessing their body positioning from the front and the side while they're executing this. Some things you should take note of are the instances where their knees might cave in, or if they're starting to round at the lower back. This will show which muscles are overactive or too tight or the ones that are underutilized. Again, this might seem like a lot when you're first starting out as a personal trainer, so go ahead and check out the Running Star program from ptpioneer.com. This course is designed to help you get started as a personal trainer, so go ahead and check that out in the description below. Once you have a good understanding of the client's general fitness, you would next need to understand their overall goals and design a program around it. This is the fun part because this allows you to understand how you can program a workout routine for the client to get better. The main tools at your disposal to start setting up this routine are the assessments that we conducted previously. First and foremost, if your client has several muscular imbalances, then you would want to address that first. This can be done by combining multiple flexibility and mobility routines, as well as some light resistance training. Regarding this type of client, functional training should be the primary focus. Additional variables such as the rest time, intensity, as well as the overall repetitions that should be performed should also be taken into consideration. Once you gain more experience as a personal trainer, you'll have a better understanding of what sort of workout routines would work for specific clients. Additionally, once you gain more experience, you should be able to understand what are your client's limits. Take for example, a client that has a history of an ACL tear. Generally, you would want to avoid putting any exercises that would put too much stress on the ACL for that specific client. Additionally, you would want to start things off slower, starting to build up stability in order to lower the risk of injury. Once you understand your client's limitations, you can start programming more progressive workout routines in order for them to further achieve their goals. Additionally, if you are able to explain why each part of the program is important, it'll also help with the overall adherence to the overall program and helping them achieve the goal. Without a program that is time-specific and correctly segmented, it will be impossible for you to track the progress of the client. The final thing to keep in mind is that there is no one-size-fits-all program each individual should be treated separately. After you have been working with a client for a while, you may have seen them achieve certain short-term or long-term goals. You would need to continuously change up their exercise routine once you see them start becoming more flexible and become stronger. If you don't do this, they'll eventually plateau and they won't be able to see as much progress. Some ways to increase the workout intensity will include increasing the weight, 
lowering the rest times or increasing the repetitions. Additionally, you can also program more strenuous or advanced exercises for them to perform. In most instances, if they're not able to progress into the next level, it's better to keep the lower intensity to prevent further injuries. It's also important to explain this factor to the client as there's no rush to the overall process. It's essential to measure the progress of your clients as this will also help you determine if you need to increase the intensity. At the very least, you should be retaking all of the measurements that you've taken in the initial assessment every single month. This is also helpful because it'll help you determine future workouts that they would need to perform. Additionally, this is also one of the biggest motivating factors for a client for them to see the visual progress that they've made. Now, the final part of the personal training role is to assess the client's overall goals and being able to fine tune accordingly. Generally, you don't want to push a client too hard before they're ready for it, but you also don't want them to progress too slow. Besides coaching your client through their program and helping them achieve their initial goals, sometimes it's good to take a step back and reassess. It might be that at one point, your client would have wanted to change their goals and would want to change their directions accordingly. Say for example, if a client had an initial goal of losing 30 pounds and they've accomplished that, then they might want to focus on another aspect of fitness. This is the moment to start fine tuning their goals and applying new strategies to the client. At this point in time, you should have been training with this client for a long period of time. So you should be able to understand what their body responds to in terms of stressors, as well as different types of programming. Overall, their progress should also be measurable and verifiable, and also keeping track of things such as progress photos are also beneficial for the client. So hopefully you like this video and hopefully this helped you get a better understanding of the job description and responsibilities as a personal trainer. If you're first getting into the industry, this should give you a general example of what the day-to-day -day looks like. If this was helpful in any way, or if you have any additional questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And if you're still deciding on a certification to get started as a personal trainer, head over to ptpioneer.com and take the quiz on the main homepage. And if you need some additional study materials for your certification, head over to traineracademy.org. As always guys, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with new videos coming out in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck studying and we'll see you guys in the next video.